My name is Raveen. I'm the founder and lead instructor of the New School of Fundraising. I'd like to take a moment to say I'm joining you from the territory of the Coast Salish people who are represented by the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh nations, and I'm honored to be a guest on their land. So fundraising, our favorite F word ever. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. So we know this. We know that strengthening the skill set of those who fundraise increases their ability to raise money for their causes, and it benefits us. It benefits our communities. It gives us money to do things as nonprofits, but we don't invest in the skill set as much as we should and into the level that we should. We, there tends to be this belief that fundraising is easy to do. We have a, a stellar group of board members. They're all CEOs and VPs, and obviously they know how to fundraise, but it's not true. It, it's not brain surgery. I'll give it that much, but it's not easy for everybody to do. So why do we continue to be really low in our investment in this way? I thought to myself, what can I do about it? Bam, I opened a school. So there, we have the new school of fundraising and our goal is to support anybody who wants to learn more about fundraising, no matter who you are. So when we look at that, who do we support? Traditionally, we've looked at fundraising education to support professional fundraisers, and we're great about teaching them how to make an ask and how to start a monthly giving program, but we don't help them. I remember when I was hired to be a director for the first time, and I was just gifted a team. There, here's your team. Go. You must know what to do with the team. We don't breed leaders. We don't help with leadership. So we need to support our fundraisers in other ways, not just the hard skills. Those that support fundraising, think of your nonprofit organization or one that you're involved with or volunteer for. What if your program staff had base fundraising knowledge and they came to you with, you know, I just talked to a client and I think I should introduce them to you. I saw great potential. They seem really like a grateful client and family. And I think they'd be interested in donating. What if your Marcom team came to you and said, do you know that it's Giving Tuesday coming up? I've heard all about it. Let's work a year out and let's do a great plan for how we can capitalize on Giving Tuesday. We need to support our volunteers more than we think that we need to, and particularly our board members, as I said before, they don't automatically know. I love it when I get into a workshop and a board member says to me, Rowena, I find fundraising cringy. And I say, great, we're gonna start from there. And by the end of this, I want you to just be as excited about fundraising as I am and to think of it not like an obligation, but an opportunity. And usually we can turn that around in two hours together, which is really exciting. And then community fundraisers. We have wonderful volunteers on there, on PACs at schools, parent advisory councils. We have people who have been participating in these big events and so passionate about ending cancer and serious diseases. Let's support them in their endeavors as well. So when we look at all these people, everyone has different needs, as you know. This is the functioning team celebrating across the table. So we're good, like I said before, at the hard skills. Sometimes somebody is gonna need an introduction to fundraising, a 101, to get them up to a base level. That may be a board member, that might be a, one of your program staff, that could be a new fundraiser. But sometimes we need we'll, more advanced skills. Maybe we'll need to talk about how to diversify their fundraising revenue. Maybe we'll need to talk about how to develop a case for support. But uh, imagine if we offered them programming like developing leadership. How about exploring your values and how they fit with your organization? How to manage difficult conversations. Can you imagine how that would be for them? How about confidence, working with a team, strategic influence? So please keep in touch. I will say nonprofits don't want to be in the tech dark ages but a lot of them don't have the time or money to invest in the tech that you're talking about. So if we focus first, we back up 10 steps and we give them the tools they need to raise more money, they're gonna be your best customers. So let's get on board with that. Keep in touch, check out the school and I hope to see you in our virtual audience one day.